Hey gang, this is Leela here from the Comic Connection in Hamilton, Ontario with the first reviews of 2009. It's a new year of reviews, a new year to start building the worst and best list that we will do at the end of another year of comics. So here we go. Uh, first up we've got Detective number 582. This is by Paul Dini and Dustin Nguyen. So this is sort of a, in the aftermath of the rest in peace stuff for Batman. This is the first part of a two issue arc that will continue in Batman 685. Uh, it's part of the Faces of Evil tie-in that you'll have seen over a bunch of the DC books. Um, in this book, we look at the world through Hush's eyes as he uses Bruce's recent disappearance to his advantage and starts to take back what Batman and Catwoman took from him a while ago. I really like this story. It was really cool to see the world through Hush's eyes because he's such a cool, ruthless, smart character. So if you are a fan, you should definitely pick this up. Uh, just to see sort of where the Batman world is going after Last Rites and then into Battle for the Cow. So pick it up. Next up we've got Sandman Dream Hunters. This is number three of four. This is by uh, Neil Gaiman and P. Craig Russell, who does the art. Uh, this is a comic book adaptation of the illustrated novella. Uh, in this issue, the monk finally uh, gets face to face with the King of Dreams and pleads for the life of the fox. Um, this is okay for me. I mean, even though we've all kind of read this story before, the art is really good, and it's nice to see a fully artistic adaptation of uh, Neil Gaiman's words. So if you're a fan, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Pick it up. And next up, we've got Vigilante Number 1 from DC Comics. This is by Marv Wolfman and Rick Leonardi. In this one, Vigilante goes undercover to try and expose the mob's con connection to a bombing during the election in which several people died, uh, but ends up very, very deep undercover, a little too far undercover for him. Um, this was a pretty good start to a series, um, like a new DC number one, because I'm not always thrilled with all of them, but this one was pretty good. It had pretty strong art and a pretty grabbing story, so not a good one, or a pretty good one to pick up for a first read. Hey folks, Jim here with the first review of 2009. Uh, first up, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Alliance, number one, written by Chris Mowry with art by Alex Milne. In this one, Sector 7 continues its, its, its experiments on the MBEs while the Autobots join forces with the military, and Sector 7 approaches Lennox with a job offer. I'm really enjoying this series so far, really good art by Alex, pretty good story by Chris. If you're a fan of Transformers, this leads into the new movie in the summer, so you gotta pick it up. Next up... Gold Digger Xmas Special Number Two. In this one, it's very various Christmas tales fa starring your favorite Gold Digger characters by an array of different artists. I really like this one. It's good. It's got the Christmas spirit in it, and if it's Christmas, you need something to cheer up with. Next up, Dawn of the Dread Force Number Zero, written by Kurt, Hath Kurt Hathaway and art by James Reyes. In this one, humans fight for survival against an unstoppable force of killer mecha. Now, yeah, you're probably looking at this book and going, yeah, that's a Transformers ripoff. And you're pretty much right. But uh, it's not a bad little book. The art's really solid. The story is okay. And it's a good preview for what might be coming. Next up, Buffy, number 20, written by Jeff Loeb, with art by Jorge Jonte and Eric White. In this one, Buffy Dreams animated style, of a battle with the disciples of Morgala. A, a dragon ensue, a fight with a dragon ensues when she is unable to stop the disciples. Um, now this is basically an adaption of the long uh, in gestation Buffy animated series that was made into a promo video. Um, if you haven't seen that, this is the only way to see it. Next up, Transformers All Hail Megatron number six, written by Shane McCarthy with art by Guido Goody. Um, now, in this one, Starscream and Megatron argue, the Insecticons deal with the Seekers, and the Autobots make a battle plans, while the humans have a desperate decision to make. Um, I'm really liking All Hail Megatron. It's probably the best Transformers series I have read in years. Uh, the art's fantastic, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Next up, Angel After the Fall, number 15, with, written by Brian Lynch, with art by Franco Uru. In this one, a battle begins against Illyria, and a soldier will fall. Uh, now, you know how I feel about Angel. I don't like Uru's art, but the story's getting better as the series goes along. So, I can't really highly recommend it, but if you're an Angel fan, give it a shot. Next up, Buffy number 21, 
written by Jane Espenson, with art by George A. Jonte and Andy Owens. In this one, Vampire Harmony becomes an overnight celebrity with an MTV reality show. Now, I've actually been a big fan of Harmony since Buffy and Angel, so I've actually been wondering what's happened to her since then. And the fact that she kills Andy Dick within the first two pages is an added bonus. So if you're a fan of Buffy, this is a must read. And last but not least, Transformers. Maximum Dinobots number two, written by Simon Furman with art by Nick Roche. In this one, it's Grimlock versus the Dinobots in a fight to the finish, while the Massination advances their plans. Um, I'm really liking Maximum Dinobots so far. It's not Nick, Nick's uh, best art, however, but uh, it's not a bad little series. It's pretty fun. If you're a Transformers fan, try it out.